Hi there. Hey, I'd like to see if I can help you understand voltage, current, and resistance, Ohm's law, maybe a little bit more intuitively. Um, that's the goal. In order to get there, I'd like to first actually go back to something you might be a little bit more familiar with, and that's gravity. So gravity is, gover is one of the four fundamental forces in the universe, and it's governed by this equation. Where k sub g is this constant, gravitational constant, m2 is, say, is the mass. We'll say in this case it's like it's a big mass, like say like the mass of the Earth. We'll represent it here, and r squared is going to be the distance between the, the two. And in this case, I wrote m1 in a different color, so m1 is say some small object out here, and there's going to be some gravitational force attracting them. And again, this was our radius between them. So this is one of the fundamental forces in the universe. It turns out there's another fundamental force in the universe that behaves very similarly, the um, electromotive force, one, another one of four. And let me go ahead and, and, and draw it up in a similar manner over here. All right, so that is going to be governed by a very similar equation. We'll call it F sub E. And we've got some constant K sub E times some um, charge, in this case, K, Q sub 2 and divided by the radius between them squared. And I'm going to do Q1 in a different color here. Or Q1 is, say, this small negative charge out here. And let's say Q2 is this bigger charge over here, positive. And there's going to be some attraction between them because they're positive and negative. But sort of a side note here, but one, um, one of the things that when Isaac Newton discovered this gravitational force that he was criticized for and he wondered about himself was how could these two masses actually have this attractive force when they're not even touching? There's no ether between them. There's, you know, there's nothing connecting them. So where does this force even come from? Um, nowadays, we sort of, there's, we posit the idea of gravitons that sort of brings them together. Um, but it begs the question of where does this, this force come from? And I would say there's a sort of a more fundamental um, understanding in because the equation gets simpler if you integrate this and you go up to what's called the, um, the gravitational potential energy. So that is defined as u. So we'll say u sub g and approximately, I mean, you have to get like into calc 3 to get, you know, do this more rigorously, but let's just say it's approximately this integral of f sub g dr, which is going to be approximately. Um, negative k sub g times m2 over r. So you notice this is actually a little bit simpler of an equation because now we just, instead of r squared, we've just got r on the bottom. And what's sometimes more interesting is something that we call v sub g. And this is just um, u sub g divided by m1. Say we just wanted to kind of understand the influence that the Earth here is going to have on its surrounding. And we'll call this the, um, the gravitational potential, V sub g. And we're just going to kind of divide out that m1 because we're not really concerned about that. We just want to know what is the influence that this Earth has around uh, what's, what's around it. So if we, um, if we work that out, it's just going to be um, negative k sub g m2 over r. And the reason I bring this up is because there's something very similar with um, the electromotive force. And this um, gravitational potential actually corresponds to what we'll see as an electric potential, which is, what, um, which is what we call the voltage, or V. So similarly, if we integrate this, we get this electric potential energy function, which is found as approximately k sub e q2 over r times q1, of course. And that electric potential we'll call V, and that's this is our voltage, and that is just going to be U sub E over Q1. And if we multiply that out, that's going to be um, negative Ke Q2 over R. You notice that we've gotten rid of that Q1 in here, so we're just looking at what is that, what is that sort of electric potential field that's surrounding Q2, this, this, um, this bigger charge that, we're, that we just kind of want to focus on. And that's what, that's what we use to... Um, Determine voltage. So, um, but to help understand this more intuitively, we can actually move from a, a sort of a gravitational example with a water tank and compare that to a circuit that's that's going into a house. So let me go ahead and draw out this water tank here. And of course, it's going to be full of water up here. 
and then we got our house over here. And what I'm going to sort of um, argue is that this is similar in a lot of ways to, let's say, just a basic um, electric circuit that's going in to power this house. Now, you can imagine that um, this water up here has a higher potential, uh, gravitational potential energy because it's higher, it's farther from the, the center of the Earth, and so it's got a different, different radius, and so it's going to give it a different energy, and that energy is, is going to be in the form of this gravitational force is going to be sort of pushing that water out into the house, which is, which is why that water would flow if you turn the faucet on. So let me just write that down here. Now similarly on this side, we've got this voltage source here and it's going to have a higher electric potential, which was what our voltage actually was. So um, going back to this water tank analogy, we, um, you know that since it has this higher potential energy, it's forcing the water. And if you if you have the um, if the water faucet is turned off, that's that's fine. But there's still going to be this pressure that's coming from it. And similarly, if your lights are turned off in your house, you've still got this this um, this voltage here. It's sort of this pressure on the current that's still there, regardless of whether there's any current flowing. Um, but if there is current flowing, let's say that we got current flowing into our house, you turn the faucet on. We'll say that this flow is um, let's say it's in units of um, mass of water per second and similarly if we want to look at this current that's flowing up here we'll define that as current it's going to be equal to the charge per second that's flowing and you notice that here we have the flow here is the, with the mass like with the gravitational force but over here we have the current which is which is um, corresponds to this charge from these fundamental equations and so that and, and if we wanted to go to units that charge is going to be in coulombs so it's going to be in coulombs per second which is actually one amp which is our um, current which we define as i so as you can imagine here if you have if you've got this if you got this water tank really high it's going to put more pressure on that water when you turn that faucet on it's going to come out faster and that's similar with um with our current here if you get if you got a higher potential electric potential here it's going to sort of push that that current um harder and and um more current's going to go through so we've got this general relationship where the current is going to be proportional to that voltage um, that we have on our source so um now let's take a look at the resistance that last piece here so imagine we had a pipe, a sort of a skinny pipe that's going into the house. So it's going to have a, a little bit of a flow through it because there's going to be higher resistance to flow. That's going to correspond to less flow. And the analogy on the um, electric side here is going to be with a, a resistor. So let's say we have this resistor here and let's say it's um, 50 kilo ohms. So that's going to be a um, We'll call that a large resistance, and it's going to lead to um, less current flowing through it. Just like a small pipe would lead to less water flowing through it. And of course, if we had, let's just say we had a big pipe, it's going to lead to a large flow of water because lower resistance is going to be related to more flow of water. And similarly, if we've got this. Um, smaller resistor here let's say this is only um, 50 ohms that's actually going to lead to a bigger current here and so you get this basic relationship here where your current is going to be proportional to 1 over r so we've got that we know that current is proportional to voltage it's also inversely proportional to resistance so we end up with the equation i equals v over r which is a little bit easier to write as um, V equals IR, which is Ohm's law. And this is something that you're, you'll, if you forget everything else about electrical engineering, this is the last thing that you're going to forget, the most basic fundamental equation that we'll use. And let me just notice a, um, a couple differences here. So this analogy generally holds um, a couple, couple differences, though. In this case, that higher potential energy was, re was based on that radius part of the equation where in this case this higher electric poten potential energy is going to be more based on this the um, Q2 because in this case obviously we can't change the mass of the earth that's not changing but we can change the, the charge here and that's when you get um, higher voltage is, is um, typically connected to that the um, greater charge um, that's in there but um, as 
you see like this analogy, it still holds, it still works pretty well. And the reason it works pretty well is because these are, the, these are two of the four fundamental forces in the universe and they turn out to be guided by basically the same um, potential functions or potential energy functions for um, gravity or in this case for the electromotive force. So I hope that sort of helps intuitively understand and maybe a little bit of theoretically um, where Ohm's law comes from. And until next time, take care.